Welcome to the second module of our discussion on inventory, uh, you know, infinite uh, planning horizon. And uh, this is uh, called the continuous review policy. That's what we are going to discuss. And uh, continuous review policy, by the way, uh, under uh, the condition of probabilistic demand. So what are the assumptions? Uh, we had made certain uh, assumptions for our EOQ model. Uh, so we must uh, understand how those assumptions are getting changed uh, here. So the first change that we see is that the demand is no longer constant uh, for us and perfectly known. Uh, in fact, the demand is probabilistic. It is still continuous. Uh, the planning horizon is still infinite. It was infinite in EOQ as well. Uh, continuous review. Let's understand what we mean by continuous review. EOQ was also continuous review. And this is also continuous review. So what is continuous review? You remember, we said that one important aspect of an inventory policy is when do you place an order. And in EOQ, we said that we place an order whenever the inventory level reached a certain uh, value, which we call the reorder point. Now, the question is that, Unless you keep monitoring the inventory at all time, how will you know that the inventory level has reached the reorder point? And therefore, whenever we talk about continuous review, we are saying that there is some kind of a reorder level that we are trying to reach, or rather we are monitoring the inventory level, and the moment that level is achieved, you know, uh, we trigger the order. So that is the reason why we call it the continuous uh, review policy. Uh, we are assuming that the supply lead time is constant, although that is not a realistic assumption, but for the time being, uh, we will live with this. And, uh, and then finally, we are saying that, you know, you remember in EOQ, there were no shortages that were allowed. But in this case, obviously, there are shortages. And shortages are in the form of lost order, which means that if there is a shortage, and the customer doesn't find what the customer is looking for, then that sale is lost forever. Something that we call a stock out. Okay, so with these assumptions, let's move forward. Now you'll find that, you know, the, the, the continuous review policy with probabilistic demand is very similar uh, to our EOQ model. Uh, Infinite planning horizon, you know, every time we are ordering some quantity, the quantity is received. So there are cycles, just as we had talked about cycles earlier, there are cycles here. Uh, the only difference is that instead of having a straight line here, which the slope was uh, constant earlier because the demand was constant, here we have some kind of a squiggly, uh, you know, line. <laughs> which represents the uncertain demand. Um, okay, so uh, what do we do? We say that, well, the lead time of supply is still constant, one of the assumptions we have made, and uh, so we are going to decide when do we place an order, and uh, like in the EOQ case, we have a small s, which we call the reorder level, and we said whenever the inventory drops to this level, you order. Because after L periods, you are going to receive that order. There is no uncertainty in that. You will receive the order after L periods. Okay? So our purpose right now for the time being is to find the value of this small s or the reorder level. Okay? Good. So... What do we know? What are we told? We said that the demand is uncertain. And we are given the distribution of the probability distribution of the demand. And uh, we are told that the demand is normally distributed. And for any normal distribution, we need only two uh, parameters to describe it completely, the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, so here is the normal curve representing the demand. Now, whenever we talk about demand, there has to be 
an associated period for which the demand is. If I say that the demand is uh, 5,000 units, uh, it would not make any sense to anybody because I have not specified 5,000 units for what period? Is it the daily demand? Is it the weekly demand? So therefore, when I say that we know the demand distribution, we are saying that we know the period, per period demand. So the mean and the standard deviation, the mu d and the standard deviation sigma d, they are the per period mean and standard deviation. Like I said, the period can be anything. It can be per hour, it can be per week, it can be per day, it can be per quarter, it can be per month, I don't know. So you can choose or whatever the, the data tells us, you know, but it is per period. Very good. So, so here we are and, uh, you know, uh, it's a symmetrical uh, distribution with the mean here. Let's call it mu d uh, as we see here. And what we are saying is that if I move to the right of the mean, you know, I, am, I can measure how much I have moved to the right in terms of how many standard deviations have I moved to the right, you know. So, the z value, okay, so suppose I am here, so this distance between the red line and this represents how many standard deviations am I to the right of the mean mu d and how many standard deviations? Well, z standard deviations. We are z standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so that's something that we need to understand. What is z? Z is the value of the standard normal variable corresponding to the total uh, probability, the cumulative probability from minus infinity till this point. So we know what z is. Uh, Okay, now let us ask ourselves that uh, I place an order when the inventory level has reached small s. Okay, so you place an order here, again you place an order here, again you place an order here, every cycle, okay. And then the order will arrive after L periods. And therefore, we are asking that for what duration do we face the risk of a stock out? I call it the risk, uh, you know, the exposure. So, period of exposure to the risk of a stock out. And this, we say, is the lead time. You know, why the lead time? Because at the start of the lead time, I already have inventory, which is equal to small s, the reorder level. All I want is that this reorder level, the small s inventory that I have, should last me for L periods at least. And if it doesn't last me for L periods, then there is a stock out. And therefore, what is the risk or for what period uh, am I kind of hanging in the air, uh, you know, uh, fearing that there might be a stock out? And that period is the, is, is the L period, which is the lead time of supply, okay? So this is something that we need to understand. And obviously, therefore, if I want to determine how much inventory should I have at the beginning of that period, so that it lasts for L periods, that inventory must be estimated based on what is the demand during the L periods, because that inventory is going to feed to the demand. So therefore, I must know what is the demand for those L periods, okay? So, let us look at the demand during lead time. I call it DDLT here. And uh, by the way, you know, how do I get the DDLT? I know the per period demand and I'm, I'm saying what is the demand for L periods? Well, we are combining L uh, per period demands. We are combining L uh, normal distributions. You know, so when you combine L norm, norm oh, by the way, these are all identical uh, normal distributions that we are combining. You know, so we get as a result a normal distribution. We all know that uh, from theory. 
okay now what is the mean of that normal distribution the mean of that normal distribution i call it mu dl earlier the mean was mu d per period mean was mu d for l periods the mean is mu dl okay similarly the standard deviation is sigma dl how do we find out mu dl well if i am combining l normal distributions then the mean of the combined distribution is simply the combination of the means of the individual distribution which means sum of the individual means and how many means are we combining you know mu d mu d mu d mu d we are combining l uh, periods so obviously this is mu d times l uh, what about the standard deviation we can't uh, combine additively combine standard deviations but we can additively combine variances okay and uh, so how many variances are we combining we are combining l variances so we are saying that you know uh, sigma d square uh, plus sigma d square plus so on uh, we are combining and we are saying that the sigma dl square is equal to this you know so the variance combined is equal to the sum of the variances of the demands that we are combining uh, and therefore you know square what is the standard deviation well i simply take root on both sides so sigma dl is square root of uh, you know those variances sum of those variances and therefore we get square root of sigma d square into l because we are combining l such uh, variances which is sigma d uh, into square root of l now let us understand very very uh, you know uh, it's very important for us to understand at this point in time that we are ignoring the covariances uh, when we are combining these distributions you know uh, we are ignoring covariances under the assumption that these demands are independent of each other okay so you must remember that that may not always be the case we are only assuming that the demands are independent which means demand of one period is independent of the demand of another period okay in case this is not uh, true then we will have to combine the covariances as well not just the uh, variances okay uh, good so here we are so therefore we know what the demand during lead time is and all we are saying is that your uh, you know your starting inventory uh, when you when you trigger the order should cover up for this demand and so well how much of the demand should it cover up for you know you can't cover up for 100% of the demand because uh, it's just not possible to cover up for 100% of the demand because the normal curve never touches the x axis it is asymptotic you know so we have to decide how much of the total demand do we cover up and uh, therefore we define something called the probability of a stock out okay and let's say that the probability of a stock out uh, during a cycle is alpha okay alpha is something that we determine and uh, and therefore you know what is stock out uh, so so let's say this is my demand during the lead time and this is my s level you know the reorder level and when will a stock out happen whenever the demand exceeds this level as long as the demand is in this zone we are absolutely fine but the moment the demand exceeds is when we have a stock out and therefore alpha is the area shaded here in red okay so fairly uh, simple so therefore uh, how do we know what what is this level of s how many standard deviations have we moved to the right of the mean we have moved z standard deviations to the right and therefore we call that z alpha and z alpha can easily be uh, you know you know determined from the normal uh, distribution standard normal distribution if we know the value of alpha very simple you know and therefore we are saying what is my s my s is mu plus this mu dl plus this z alpha sigma dl so mu dl plus z alpha sigma dl mu dl we have already seen is mu d times l 
and z alpha sigma dl is sigma d times square root of l under the assumption that the demands are independent. Well, well, well. So we know what our reorder level is. Uh, <coughs> so here we are, the same figure. Now, I want to emphasize here something very clearly that the reorder quantity, the reorder level is given by this as we have seen. However, the second term, z alpha sigma d square root of L, which accounts for the variability of the demand, is called the safety inventory. Okay, so, uh, you know, we said that policy means you decide two things, when to order, how much to order. We know when to order in this case because we said that whenever the stock falls down to a level called the reorder level, we order and we have calculated what that reorder level is. Now the question is how much do we order? Well, we order Q star, the same Q star that we had seen in EOQ, the economic order quantity. And uh, we know how to find that through the formula shown here. The only uh, thing we have to be cautious about is that the D, the annual demand here, is not constant. You know, earlier the demand was constant. In this case, it is not. And therefore, we have to take the mean demand into consideration. Okay? So, so pretty much uh, this is what we need. How much to order, when to order, both of them are now known. And therefore, I come to the, to the last uh, slide for this module. And uh, this is interesting. We are saying that, you know, what is my average inventory level at any given point in time? If you remember, in UQ, my average inventory level at all times was Q by 2 or Q star by 2. In this case, my average inventory level is Q star by 2 divided, uh, sorry, plus the safety inventory. And... Uh, uh, why is it uh, interesting to, you know, uh, to, to, to take a note here is that we are saying Q star by 2, Q star by 2 is the cycle inventory because we are ordering Q star every cycle, you know. What does Q star represent? Q star represents the average demand during that cycle. We have already said that, you know. Whatever order quantity you have in a cycle, that is the average consumption in that uh, cycle. But we are ordering the safety inventory as it is. We are not saying safety inventory by two. Why are we saying safety inventory by two? Why are we adding the entire safety inventory? And that is something that I thought I would like to uh, discuss with you. Okay, so here we are. You know, this is my... Uh, small s, the reorder level, as we have already seen. The red zone here is my alpha, the probability of a stock out. And this yellow band that you see represents my safety stock. I told you, the safety stock is Z alpha sigma dl. Z alpha sigma dl is here. Okay, so this is my safety stock. Okay, now what happens is that during the lead time, the DDLT that you see is a normal distribution. And therefore, there are 50% chances that the demand during the lead time will be on this side and 50% chances that the demand during the lead time will be on this side because it's a symmetrical distribution. And therefore, you will have sometimes demand during the lead time here. If you have demand during the lead time somewhere here in this zone, then your safety inventory does not get consumed at all. However, if your demand exceeds the mean demand during the lead time, you eat into your safety inventory. The thing that we need to understand is that 50% of the chance, 50% of the times, we are more than safety inventory. We are left, you, you know, we are left with more than safety inventory at the end of DDLT because our demand was not, it was less than the mean demand during lead time. 50% of the times we are eating into, so what happens to the safety inventory? 
half the time it is going down half the time it is going up but it is varying around what it is varying around the mean level and therefore at all point in time the average inventory that you carry is the mean level which is the entire safety inventory and that is the reason why in the average inventory we add the total safety inventory and not safety inventory by two or any other factor that brings us to the end of this particular module uh, in the next module we will talk about something very similar uh, called the periodic uh, review model